Thank you for joining us this beautiful spring evening. These days of struggle and uncertainty, it seems more vital than ever to cherish friendship and music, music being one of the most direct ways of sending light, as Schumann said, into the darkness of the heart. So we are immensely grateful to Alastair Beetson and Adrian Brendel and Sam Dye for coming to send this light with such gracious generosity. This is a fundraising event, and we are grateful to you for your support, which will enable us to keep the Abbey alive until we can again welcome you, embrace you, and thank you. So please like and subscribe, and I hope you will enjoy the concert as though you were listening with us. Hello, everyone. And thank you so much for joining Alistair and myself for this concert today. Uh, we are really thrilled to be here in the Abbey in Sutton Courtenay, a place where we've both spent many happy uh, days in the past in concert and visiting our very good friends, Charlotte and Dylan. We give this concert in aid of the Abbey and uh, hope that you will consider giving generously to this most noble of causes. Um, so many wonderful events have taken place here over the years, and we all hope that that can continue. Um, we're going to play three pieces today. A piece is by Bach, Jean-Marie Vidor, and Beethoven. Now, most people will not be aware that Vidor wrote a cello sonata. And I wasn't aware of it either until a few years ago when I was asked to play it in a festival in Ireland. Um, and it was a, a wonderful discovery. I didn't know all that much about Vidor until I started reading about him uh, and couldn't believe what a, an important figure he was. He was from a, a family of organ builders and early in his life already a very fine organist. Eventually he succeeded César Franck as professor of organ at the Paris Conservatoire and was so successful in this role that he also quickly assumed the position of composition professor. Vidor was a very long-lived man and taught an extraordinary array of fine composers including Darius Mio, Edgar Varese, one of the great early modernists, Louis Vienne, and a lot of other really important uh, French composers. And later in his life, set up the École Américaine, which was then taken over from Vivero by Maurice Ravel, where Nadia Boulanger had her legendary composition class. In the midst of it all, Vidor composed himself. Of course, he's the most known as a composer of organ works. And it's maybe because of this that pieces like this cello sonata have not been so accessible because they've uh, really been um, overshadowed by his other output. Um, he was, by all accounts, an extremely learned and quite enlightened man and a brilliant improviser. And there are stories of his students sneaking into Saint-Sulpice where he was um, a resident organist, to listen to him improvise on the organ. And there are many accounts of the inspiration of his improvisation, something that was often really elevated. And I think you hear that often in this very interesting sonata in three movements. Either side of that, we're playing uh, the G major Bach gamba sonata, the first of three sonatas Bach wrote. Um, when he was in Leipzig. Uh, at the time, he, amongst his other duties as cantor, the Thomas Kirche, he was also um, the music director of the Collegio Musicum, which was a, a kind of a chamber music club, really, that had many uh, concerts in Cafe Zimmermann, amongst other places. Um, it is at this time that he wrote a lot of these duo sonatas and probably did so for a very 
famous gamba player at the time called Carl Friedrich Abel, who by all accounts was a, was a marvellous player, as he'd need to be to play these, because uh, at that time, they, certainly they would have been very challenging. And finally, the Beethoven's not in C major, uh, one of two late sonatas he wrote, uh, which are really radical departures from anything he'd done before. Um, in a way, they are gateway pieces to his late style, very pared down, concise works. The Beethoven of the A major cello sonata is no more. Things are compressed, um, hugely distilled, and um, and a lot more radical sounding uh, in many ways. Two movements, the first movement with a, a beautiful uh, andante opening that doesn't have this slightly portentous feel that some of the other slow openings do in the Opus 5 sonatas. Um, and then a dramatic um, relative minor allegro, which busts apart the serenity of the opening. Um, a really important piece, uh, as all his five sonatas were, we take these pieces for granted, but all of them in their way are groundbreaking works. So we play these with great pleasure, and thank you again for joining us.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 